Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Accents Canada. Hope you're doing well. Philip on my right, Angus behind the camera. Today we're going to talk about, actually before we do that, let's, depending on when this video drops, uh, we should remind everybody that the Toronto Audio Fest, which is happening next weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, October the 22nd to Sunday, October the 24th, it's at the Westin Toronto Airport, Airport, I should say. And we did a very quick video talking about it. And uh, either Jerry or Angus will uh, add the video link in the description. Hopefully, we'll see you uh, at the show. Um, we won't have our own rooms this year. We're, I shouldn't say we. I was too lazy to... Uh, although I shouldn't have been lazy. I don't do any of the work. I just tell the guys to pack everything up organize the movers and then I show up and pretend that I did any work but I, I just thought it was going to be a, a lot of work and uh, but we'll we'll be there manning a booth is it right to say manning these days personing 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 a booth um, with iFi and other um, vendors uh, come by at the show, we'll have some great deals on B-Stock, OpenBox, iFi's, and some other uh, products as well. Um, you have to either be at the show. Most of the uh, quantities will be for sale at the show. Uh, we'll also allocate a few um, a, a few a few pieces that you can buy from our online store. But it will drop um, October the twenty second. So watch out for that. Anyway, today we're talking about the Cayenne CS eighty eight A tube integrated amplifier um, i've been meaning to uh, do something with this for quite a while the first time i heard it a few months ago is um, i said okay we got to do this and then we got caught up and didn't get a chance to do it um, so let me give you some of the um, specs first the cs88 is 3299 us or 3899 canadian it comes with kt88s but you can easily switch those out for el34s Handmade construction with the finest point-to-point -point wiring. By the way, I'm reading from the factory's uh, information, so this is not my words. Two EI output transformers with wide bandwidth, specially designed toroid transformer for power supply, two 6SL7s and two 6SN7 tubes in the preamp stage, four KT80H electroharmonics, it looks like, for the uh, uh, power outputs, triode and ultralinear selection, rated at 48 watts per channel ultralinear or 27 watts per channel triode and easy to adjust um, biasing with a bias meter on the very top uh, let's see what else comes with a remote control and um, let's see soft start high quality japanese alped motor potentiometer and two rca line inputs and one phono input weighs 61.6 pounds or 28 kilograms okay philip what do you think um <clears throat> well originally what happened to your maple leaf um, jersey you gave up hopefully they lost last night <laughs> no i just didn't wear it today I, I, it's in the wash got various maple leaf pair you know um, jerseys clothes clothing and it's all in the laundry right now because I do wear it uh, on a fairly regular basis um, <clears throat> uh, so originally I mean it's just such a convoluted story with this this power amp um, we were we listened to it a couple weeks back in concert with well at least I did uh, CS55 the 88 and we had a 150 here Richard our our, our um, erstwhile cayenne uh, uh, supplier he dropped a 150 off uh, for us to have a listen and um, anyway so it was I listened to everything in that range and then we decided that we weren't going to do the the video because Richard took away the 150 shame Richard, on you Richard I don't understand you sometimes uh, so we couldn't do that video but I did do all the prep fast forward a couple of weeks uh, I get this email from you Oh, we're doing this video. We're doing the 88 by itself. Okay, no problem. So we we did set it up. Uh, and in the course of the past week, um, it got set up like three times because we kept on having to take it out of the setup and actually using the room to demo other gear. 
Um, so yeah, finally, pesky clients. They yeah, keep coming I mean, they in. They keep on buying stuff. I don't understand it. I mean, just leave us alone for a bit, okay? Uh, speaking of clients, I got a call from... Um, Tangent again. <laughs> yeah. Australia last night. I was here packing Australia. up. Australia. Yeah, some some Wilsons. And I got uh, the phone rang. I thought, okay, I'll pick it up. I had some weird telephone number. It was a guy from Australia. And he was looking specifically to, to buy an app to drive a pair of Magna Pants. And I told him, Hegel. Uh, which is really, really far tangent right now. Um, <clears throat> and he wanted to buy one from us, but I said I couldn't I couldn't sell it to him. So just for you guys out there, you know, you have to buy from your local dealer and uh, we fully support that. Yeah. As a Plus, ongoing. I think the voltage is different. Yeah, it? it's 220, but yeah. you would think that, you know, it comes from Norway, they would, everything would already be 220, the European stuff. So to the CS88A, um, when I originally compared it to the 55, uh, it was a major step up, even though the price difference is fairly small. Everything that the 55 does, the 88 does better. I hate to be using that kind of terminology. <laughs> yeah, just We'll link the CS55 review in, in the description box, so we're done now. <laughs> well, how does it do it better? I mean, if you look at it, um, um, first and foremost, the fact that it has octal-based uh, triodes, uh, the small signal tubes being octal-based, the bigger, um, um, higher current tubes, uh, that makes a big difference in the input stage. The actual preamp section of it uh, sounds more robust. It has bigger voltage swing. It has just better dynamics bigger sound stage, it's more open. Um, it it has a little bit more lushness to it. It has a little bit more, or it's a little bit more relaxed. Uh, and, and these are all evident when you listen to the amplifier. With the CS55, I often found myself wanting to use it in ultralinear. With the CS88, it, the actual reverse was true. I ran it mostly in um, trial because it had more than sufficient drive um, in trial operation for the speakers we were using. Yeah, we should mention that. Yeah, the review system has become our go-to, the Sonet 05, which, you know, fantastic uh, you, speaker. Fantastic speaker. Love I really highly recommend it. It does it does everything that a speaker should, and it does. it's not too colored, which is, you know, one of the nice things about the Sonetto is that it, 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 it is very much a blank canvas for whatever you throw, um, you know, in front of it. Uh, it's you, easy to drive. It's easy it's, to it's, drive. It doesn't have this crazy load that some no. speakers do. I mean, even though normally it's a four ohm load, uh, the trial setting in the CS88 had no problems. I was driving it pretty hard, and it was more than loud enough. Um, occasionally, on some some music, I would switch to ultra linear if you want a little bit more slam, a little bit more focus. Um, perhaps the music has a bit more complication. Certainly some symphonic music could could use ultra linear to, because it will actually play even bigger than the triode setting. Um, I did find, now Richard had warned me about the tubes that the, the unit comes with um, because they're designed for the Chinese market. And you get, you actually do hear some of um, that bias uh, in the way the tube, tube app presents itself. Sometimes there's a little bit of a, I found a little bit glary for certain kinds of music. There's a little bit of a hardness in the upper mid range. Um, I think that's all because, you know, those tubes tend to be a little bit drier sounding than some of the vintage tubes that I personally like and have used in many other amplifiers. Um, so if I were to buy this amplifier and use it on a daily basis, which I can e easily see myself doing, because it actually does everything well. It's not really weak at any one point. I would definitely change the tubes and, and try and find something, you know, just a little bit more towards my liking and my preference. But as is, it's 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 a very revealing amplifier. It doesn't. It really doesn't suffer any of the audiophile kind of like. Um, analytical qualities. It has a sense of flow and rhythm. Um, it's just in, totally enjoyable. I just sat there, I listened, I played a playlist that I hadn't used in some time. And I just played song after song after song after song, just like you do sometimes. And I just didn't want to stop. 
And I, I had to look at my watch and go like, well, you know, we're going to close the store in a few minutes. We have to actually go around and clean up and, 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 and you know, I have to help out. Um, and that's only what, that's when I stopped. Actually, I, I overextended my time listening to the unit. That's fascinating. Again, just to remind everybody, um, Philip and I don't discuss. Uh, as a matter of fact, Philip came a little bit late today, so we didn't have a chance to even talk about anything. Just say we got to shoot this, and because um, we're expecting a bunch of shipments today, and and uh, got to run around doing some stuff today, so we just told Angus to turn the cameras on, and away we go. Um, virtually everything that Philip said, I found, and in fact, the one thing that I thought, oh, you know, I wonder if Philip found the same thing as I did, uh, was that slight emphasis. Right, uh, um, slight glare, but I, I hesitate to I, I hesitate to to make too big a deal of it because I'm not sure if it was because of the recordings I was playing this morning because I was purposely playing a lot of you know just regular non audiophile recordings you know just stuff that I wanted to listen to because it wasn't always there and for example I I, I put it on. Um, um, so Rune has this option of going to Rune Radio. So this morning I typed in the Eagles and chose Rune Radio and let it play a bunch of different songs while the amplifier is warming up. And one of the songs that came onto rotation was Adele. And Adele, at best, is bright. I mean, I, I, I love the music, I love her words, but not my favorite recording quality. And... It, it didn't sound as bright as a lot of times I hear it, but it was definitely somewhat glary, but manageable. Um, on the other hand, I was thinking, you know, with other recordings that I know a bit better, that it was still slightly glary, and I was thinking, well, you know, could always play with the uh, bias. We didn't, we didn't, at least I didn't uh, play with the bias. And speaking of that, it's really easy to do. You yeah, can you can, adjust. you can, you can, you can just turn the bias down a little bit because yeah. it is, it is a manual bias. You have the option of running it on the lower side of yeah. the bias, which would reduce some of the energy in the top end. And definitely, if you like Adele. Don't go to the ultra linear mode. <laughs> no. no, the triode is fine. Her oh, voice sounds very good in triode. Triode is spectacular. Um, a brand that we will not mention, but is close close cousins to Cayenne. Um, Made in the same factory. Uh, uh, switchable also between triode and, and ultra linear. With with the triode. I didn't discover it to be dramatically better. Better, but not with the Cayenne. The, the triode is, is magical. It's like, wow, this is so nice. As a matter of fact, it sounded so sweet and so good that I was um, just imagining all different kinds of speaker pairings um, inspired by our good friend Nidish, who is a huge fan of wine and and he always talks about how wine should be paired with food and I know nothing about wine because I'm allergic to wine. And um, so as I was having this this tangential thought in my mind, um, it suddenly dawned on me that Angus's um, uncle, right, bought a pair of Sabrina X's. And I was thinking, boy, this, this, I wonder what it would sound like. And I was actually really um, motivated to try and hook it all up. And, and then I came into this room, which is where the Sabrinas are. And then I realized that the wiring configuration in this room is not quite easily set up to hook up the uh, the the Cayenne. Otherwise, I would have I would have just hooked it up and 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 listened to it. And I I bet you that would be a really beautiful combination if you like um, a slightly warmer, slightly more romantic sound, especially in the mid range. The the Wilsons are uh, the Sabrinas are easy to drive with re beautiful bass extension, and and while the speakers are not inexpensive, the amplifier is relatively speaking inexpensive. That would be a very interesting combination. I definitely got a, a, a real good sense of flow and liquidity definitely. in the triode mode. Oh. Um, it was just really enjoyable. There was nothing harsh about it. And 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 now I know there are some people out there who have seen amplifiers, tube amps, they, uh, you know, that are dramatically less expensive than this one. Um, but one thing I will note that some of these lesser brands have a kind of uh, graininess to it that I that is not evident in at all in the mm -hmm. Cayenne. The Cayenne is ultra smooth and a little bit relaxed. I wouldn't say it's you know Macintosh relaxed. It still has a, quite a bit of an excitement to it, but overall 
it can play slow. But don't you think for a tube amplifier, it also has really good Pratt? It has really yes, good- Yes, and the bottom end is, is quite firm and punchy and dynamic, uh, even in trial. And yeah. I tested this by, of course, playing hip hop. And you know, enter the Wu Tang. Um, I played "Protect Your Neck," and that was slamming. And then I played a little bit of you know, uh, uh, Biggie Smalls, <laughs> and that was also really fantastic. And you know, uh, Dr. Dre, and I was I was happy. This is why I couldn't stop listening. It was uh, just one more song, just one more song. And every song was like something way off the grid in terms of audio file them. Uh, these are all you know, um, the the kind of production is is obviously pop bass and radio friendly and um, but big bottom ends and this amplifier did not suffer and certainly the Sonetto was more than capable of staying uh, keeping up with it okay so now the second segment of this uh, let's describe cons negatives of this amplifier because I've had a bunch of um, email feedback thank you very much by the way for for your feedbacks and 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 incidentally while before I forget um, please uh, subscribe turn on notifications, you know, the drill, and add your comments if you have any. If you've heard the Cayenne, if you've heard other tube amplifiers compared to it, please, um, we love to read your uh, comments. What are the negatives, uh, if you can think of any, about this particular? Ultimately, um, so, so the negative is it's not as good as I would want it to be. In other words, I listened to the 150. I haven't listened to the 100 yet, so there's two models above this, the 100 and, and the And the 845. Well, the 845 is a totally different. That. I really like the 845, yeah. enough said about that. But, <laughs> but the 150, so for everything that you think might be a little bit weak on this amplifier, they solve it in the next one up. Yeah. Uh, at least in the 150. Um, and again, Richard, bring that thing back. Um, <laughs> But it's it, not actually a con because it's it's it's, it's you know the, it for is, what it is price wise. It is what it is. Okay, you think like you're spending three to four thousand dollars depending yeah. on you know what currency you're using, and um, but for that kind, uh, you know, for that money, it's really well spent. It's very good value for what you get. Ultimately, for instance, this amplifier is not as good as the synthesis that we have that in, in the store. Agreed. It's not as refined, but it's. Easily as musical, you know, I didn't really suffer for the lack of the ultimate little bit of extra resolution. I don't necessarily need that. It conveys, again, connectedness and emotion in a really good way. Uh, the, the Obviously, the, the one thing I would change is maybe the tubes, but the stock, stock, stock tubes are okay. Uh, no, no amplifier has great stock tubes, you know, they encourage you to change them out. Well, part of it also is as a manufacturer, when they're using tubes, they have to make sure that there's ready availability right. and decent pricing. Mm -hmm. right? And then beyond that, it's up to the end user to choose whatever tubes they want. So this is this is this is what I've been recommending to our clients. Um, you know, it's inexpensive enough to buy a set of power tubes. Uh, four EL thirty four is a couple hundred dollars. Even KT eighty eights, and these are all modern manufacture. They're probably made in the Far East, and they're more than adequate. The the quality is fine. We haven't had a single amplifier here blow up in any way. None no. of the tubes have failed. Um, they're very reliable. It's very reliable. Uh, the you know, what are the cons about this oh, thing? Oh, I have one. What's that? Um, I wish it had more input options right so generally speaking there's only three sets of inputs um one of them could be the phono so really you got two sets of analog i inputs. wish it had xlr inputs because i had a client come in the other day and then uh i was recommending them the cs88 uh and it was pretty much perfect for their situation they wanted to uh, a tube integrated uh something that's moderately priced but they had spent a lot of money on XLR cables, like $1,000 on a pair of XLR cables. Um, well, and then the amp just doesn't have XLR inputs. So, But this is not this is not the design of it. It's not designed for that. Even the one that above that with, with XLR inputs doesn't mean that it's actually XLR. It's not actually balanced. Yeah, I understand. Unless the entire circuit is balanced, it's basically meaningless. Yeah. You know... I don't. I don't find that to be a weakness. What I do, well, you know, Kara Johnson. Not to uh, cut in, but Kara Johnson is famous for only using single ended. That's correct. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with single ended. 
unless you want to run really long lengths. And then sometimes that's okay. But at the same time, a lot of the benefit of a balance, you know, input is that it's part of a balanced circuit, which means three different conductors because the ground is separate. And it actually, balance sounds different from single-winded. So now let's compare it to the Hegel. Since Hegel is one of our popular uh, integrated amps, the H120 is 3,600 Canadian. The uh, CS88 Cayenne is 38.99. So basically $300 difference. What do you think of the two differences? I always prefer tubes over transistors. So obviously I would like the 88 better than the 120. The 120 does other things which are really great. Um, it has more functionality built into it because it has the streamer, it has the DAC, it has the home theater bypass. Um, it's ex extremely quiet designed. It can drive magna planers. So, you know, it can drive magna pan speakers. That's a big deal. Tube amps, for the most part, can drive planars fairly well, but ultimately it will not be as grippy and as control uh, as something like the Hegel. I would have both in my system. I honestly, that's what I've done. I have an H360 at home, which I use most of the time, and then I'm going to have a big tube rig, which I will use to listen to, you know, like music when I'm really, really seriously wanting to listen to music. So and however I feel, I'll switch back and forth. So to, uh, uh, my answer is both. I like both. <laughs> okay. Um, last general question. Um, new category again. Who should consider it? Who who are the who, who are the natural buyers for the CS eighty eight Cayenne? What people, sort of a people who love music? <laughs> you could say that about the Hegel. Too. No, I mean, but, but what so, I mean to say is they're not. It's not technical. Yeah. It's when you're buying a tube amp, it's about how it sounds, you know, how it doesn't sound like, um, it's not analytical in any sense. It is just, it just has a naturalness about it that seems more akin to our memories. I think that's, that's, that's a big part. No matter what you listen to in the past, there's always a kind of um, rosy, you know, tinted view of it. And I believe tube amps bring us back closer to that kind of memory all the time. Because, for instance, you will never hear someone say, well, that thing sounds harsh and brittle and, you know, it, it doesn't sound like music. Anybody who listens to a tube amp for the first time or continues to listen to a tube amp will always say, oh, you know, it's like so inviting, so warm, so, you know, um, uh, it, it, well, I'm, I'm at a loss for words here, but. Like a nice cup of hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, hot tea, yes. hot, hot coffee, <laughs> however you want to do it. But but that's the nature of tubes. And I believe that for someone who doesn't really want to push it further and further and further, the Cayenne is, is perfect. It does more than enough. It has more than enough of those tubey qualities without being too much. It's not like a Fisher receiver or one of those vintage pieces that's all about the warmth. Because the Cayenne has adequate resolution to play any piece of music and allow you to hear everything that is good about it and possibly some of the things that are bad about it. It it doesn't it doesn't discriminate in that sense. Well the other thing I also like about the Cayenne is that it's powerful enough with the uh, ultra linear mode so that if you did have speakers that were somewhat tough to drive it probably would still do it. You would definitely want to compare it or try it out first. But if you have normal good quality speakers um forums and up uh, uh in other words uh, real forums and up as opposed to very dramatic swings and you know with huge capacitance and 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 huge phase uh changes i would say it would be a great amplifier to check out integrated amp to check out and um Definitely most bookshelves. Like I, I, I can't think of, other than the crazy ginormous speakers that we have, um, any of the Sonos Farbs, I think. I, 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 one of the things that came to my mind was the mini uh, Minima, right? The, yeah. The, the Electa Amateurs, um, uh, the Nova, the little bookshelf Novas. Uh, Guarneri would sound fabulous so with this thing. a really good client of mine purchased Minima and a CS55. Yeah. And it's the basis of his cottage system in, on some 
little cottage he has on an island in, in Newfoundland. Yeah. So that's what he took out there. And he loves it. It's great. It's perfect. You know, it's it's cold outside and, and, and you've got, you know, the lushness of that little system playing beautiful music. Um, it's perfect. Yeah. This is this. So when when I like, like Philip said earlier, when I heard this and I in fact, I dug up the uh, CS55, the smaller version of this amplifier, just to refresh my memory, to make sure that I wasn't um, overthinking this. And it was absolutely right. The, the 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 bigger brother is better in every way, better and um, worth the money. A lot of times things are better and not necessarily worth the money, especially if budget's a real issue. This is one of those instances where if a client says, well, how much is it worth the money? I'd say without a doubt. Um, if you have to go back and save money, I tell you, go back and save the money. Um, it, the, where the CS55 comes into its own is, you know, if, if really that's a hard line as, as far as budget is concerned or as a secondary system like Philip's client, um, but I, w I would say this might be the sweet spot in the lineup. Yes, because it's still relatively affordable. Yeah. It's not a big premium to no. go up to this. And in, in, in some ways, I actually like it better from um, you know a feature standpoint because it still has the phono stage, but it doesn't try to include some inexpensive uh, DAC that you know most yeah, people maybe use. use. Yeah. Yeah. So. In our in our in our setup, basically, again, we were using ZenStream, feeding into a very old HRT streamer called the Streamer Three, which is only a three hundred dollar USB DAC, uh, bus powered, and the cables that we had on that system, from the DAC to the pre uh, to the uh, uh, input on the on the on the on the eighty eight was more expensive than the than the streamer and the DAC combo, so you know. Relatively inexpensive, but I, I, I like that proposition where um, a little bit less is actually a little bit more because then you can choose a relatively inexpensive thing that matches well. And, you know, if you have something already lying around, it's definitely usable. And that's what we did, you mm -hmm. know. Angus, any last words? No? You like the amp? Yeah, it's good. I like it. Good. Well, it gets two thumbs up from me, two thumbs up from Philip and Angus. Two, Two thumbs, thumbs up. You got three thumbs up. <laughs> so we've got. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this amplifier. If you get a chance, definitely check it out. It's it's one of those um, um, superb uh, audiophile finds in our industry, and I don't think you'd regret it. All right, we better we better get going because we've got a bunch of things we got to do today. Uh, Adrian from Body Excellence Canada, Philip Angus. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.